All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use Vim inside of VS Code. Now, if you're looking at how to use Vim as if it were VS Code, then I would suggest you check out this other video that I've linked in the description below by another YouTuber called Ben Awad. So first of all, why would you even want to use Vim instead of VS Code? The first argument that you might hear quite often is that you'll be able to code faster with all the functionality that Vim offers. Frankly, I don't find this very convincing because VS Code has its own powerful shortcuts. And although navigating through Vim is rather straightforward and convenient, I feel that I can achieve the same results and the efficiency using the trackpad of my Mac, if let's say I'm not using a keyboard. But that's just my personal preference, it might not be the same for you as well. That said, I find the second argument of Vim more convincing, which is that it allows for better ergonomics. So if you keep your hands close to the keyboard, you are less likely to strain your wrists, especially after long periods of coding. And so you can think of Vim users like professional pianists. You'll notice that they always try to reduce the number of movements that their fingers make. And that's simply because if you do less, you can do things much faster. The fewer movements your fingers make, the more keystrokes you'll be able to make in the same amount of time. And the amazing thing is that over time, these professional pianists or these advanced Vim users, they don't even think about it anymore as it's become part of their muscle memory. So how are you going to get started? First, you need to open up the extensions tab by pressing Command Shift X or Control Shift X on the Windows and then type in Vim simply like that. Select the first option and you will need to click install. And because I've already installed, you should see something like this once you're done. Now, before you close this window, it's a good idea to scroll through the details to find out what exactly this extension is offering you. So VS Code Vim is an emulation for VS Code and you notice that we have a table of contents here. You can take a brief look through and What's important here is that we have a settings.json file that we can actually customize. And this is just an example. We have, let's say, control keys set to true. We have insert mode key bindings, which we'll take a look at later. And we have a few other shortcuts here. For example, leader D, which will map to DD, control N, and we also have the vim.handle keys. So all of these are the essentials to getting started with customizing Vim in your VS Code. If you scroll through further, we will see that we have a few other options here, which you can take the time to look through and customize to your own needs. So by itself, once you install it, Vim works right out of the box. You can navigate around, you can copy and paste and so on, but that's not the end of it. For example, once you enter insert mode and you want to get out, you have to press escape key at the moment, right? That doesn't have to be the case. So how can you customize this? Let's say I open up the palette, command shift P or control shift P, you can search for your settings.json. So what you want to look for is your VS code settings.json and not your workspace JSON. So it's the first one here for me. I'm going to open it up. And the first thing that I want to customize is the insert key bindings. So here you see that before, if I press JJ, what that's going to map to is the escape key. So in other words, if I'm in insert mode and I press JJ, I will escape. And so you can customize this if let's say you prefer something else like JK. And then now if you Remember to save. If you're in insert mode, you can press JK to exit out of insert mode, back into normal mode. And so I'm quite comfortable with JJ, which is the default, so I'll stick with this. And another thing to point out here is that because you're using Vim, your control keys won't work as per normal. And so that's because Vim use control keys is true. You can set this to false. And the reason for this is because I typically like to use the control A and control E to jump to the start and end of the line. But now you notice that if I do E, it's just scrolling, although control A works fine. There is a better way to resolve this rather than just changing the true to false. And that's if you scroll below. So notice that we have a section here of vim.handle keys. And all this is saying is that I want vim not to handle the control A keys. And so that's set to false, which is why I can do control A to jump to the start of the line. If you want to enable the control E, then you would just need to add in this line, save, and now I can jump to the start and end with control A and control E. If you're on Windows, then you might want to add in a few others like control V, control C, and so on. But for a Mac user, this is just fine. The reason why you wouldn't just change the control keys here to false is because you can actually redo your changes with control R. So let's say I've just uncommented this. If I want to undo, and redo it, I can do Ctrl R and then it's back. So this selective handling of keys is a much better solution. The second thing I would recommend you to customize is the tab keys. So currently, if you are editing a file, you notice that you can't tap and that's as per normal Vim rules, but you can enable this. So if you open up the palette again, Command Shift P, and now I search for my key bindings. So your key bindings, you can just search for key and keybindings.json is actually named keyboard shortcuts. So if you open this to enable tabs, all you need to do is to add in these few lines. Remember to save. And then now I'm able to, let's say I'm here, I can tap, I can 
shift tab to undo the tab. And I've also customized these few shortcuts over here. So control tab and control shift tab, which will execute this command workbench.action.nextEditor. So what this does is it brings you to the next tab or the next editor like that. So this is quite similar to how you might change tabs in Google Chrome or any web browser. And so I find this more convenient for me to put control tab and control shift tab here. So yeah, if you find any other shortcuts that you think are useful, you can always add them to this list over here. But remember to add a comma after each of these shortcuts. All right, so a couple more minor details that I should probably mention is that now that you're using Vim, if you use the DD command, for example, DD, this will actually delete the line and overwrite your current clipboard. So this can be a bit annoying if let's say you already used a command C or control C. Then if you delete this line and you paste, what you get is the line that you just deleted. And so that's not exactly what you want. So make sure to be very careful when you're using control C, command C, or the DD command. Another thing that you might find slightly annoying is let's say if you select a word over here and you want to change this, typically what you could do if you're not using Vim is you can just start typing the word, but because you're in normal mode, Vim won't allow you to do that. So again, if you select this word, press C to cut it, which is not very intuitive because typically if you're in Vim, you will just do CIW and that works. But because you select the word like this, then all you need to do is to press C to cut or change. So that's something that you might take a while to get used to. In fact, having tried Vim and VS Code for the past few weeks, I've noticed that I don't actually use that many shortcuts for Vim because I'm already quite familiar with the VS Code shortcuts. So typically, I will only use Vim for, let's say, adding a line below or adding a line above or let's say I want to select multiple lines, then I can do Shift V to enter visual line mode and then select the lines that I want, delete or paste them and so on. Besides that, I don't actually use commands like the slash to search. Although you could, if you notice below here, if you start typing, let's say learn, then you see that it highlights the word itself. But frankly, you can just use VS Code's command F and search from there and it even offers you the find and replace function. So yeah, if you'd like to find out more about VS Code shortcuts, you can check out the link in the description below, which will give you a quick crash course of the most useful keyboard shortcuts that will speed up your editing workflow in VS Code. All right, that's it for this video. Do let me know in the comment section below if you find it useful to use Vim in VS Code and why or why not. Personally, I find it useful, but it's not exactly life-changing for me. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well. And feel free to also share your own tips and tricks and shortcuts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.